in uh, Fort Lauderdale here with Florida coach Greg Troy. Drove a few, few, few hours south from Gainesville, and he's going to talk about some of the stuff we've seen from some of his swimmers this summer and um, how things are going uh, right now at UF. Coach, thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Thanks for having the opportunity to talk to you. So um, let's talk about some of your, uh, your athletes at the Olympic Games. I think probably the first one we should get to is Caleb Dressel, who had, one of the, had a very memorable Olympic debut, got to lead off a 400 freestyle relay in his first Olympic swim, go a best time, and win a gold medal, and then get really emotional. What, watching at home, what, what were you think, feeling for him at that moment? Uh, a, a lot of pride in his performance. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just uh, he's a special guy to start with, and uh, his emotion in the, in the situation was genuine and true, but um, very, very little international experience. One yeah. junior, junior trip three years ago, and other than that, he's not been in any national teams, and to be put in that sort of pressure cooker right away off the top, uh, we felt comfortable he would handle it, but having him actually do it and seeing the emotion involved was tremendous. Just seeing kind of the growth he's had from taking the time off a couple of years ago to coming into your program and not having the 100 right away to obviously what he did this year at NCAAs. Where does that come from and how have you seen him grow and develop as a swimmer and as a person? Uh, it, it does relate a lot to being the person. Mm -hmm. His value structure, um, the, the way he approaches things for, for a young person, he's extremely professional for someone that was in. He came to school at 17, mm -hmm, so he was right. 17 to 19. His, uh, his maturity level is tremendous. Great skill set, um, m much more than just a, a sprint guy, but he's, certainly that's where his best skills lie, and he just continues to grow. Yeah. The other swimmer that you directly coached that was on the Olympic team was Elizabeth Beisel. Um, getting, all, getting through Olympic trials with all the health issues and the injuries that, that she dealt with, what were you thinking for her at that meet as she battled through that 400 IM and then and did get on the team? Um, we were. I was really proud of the way she affected, mm -hmm. um, especially after having a poor year last year. Coming into this year, and she, she was uh, she did so well at the trials. Um, we were we were certainly a little disappointed with the time at the Olympics. We thought she could be a little bit faster, but at the same time, that it was just such an emotional drain the way the whole summer went. Yeah. But she's. Um, she handled it well, raced real tough, and, and certainly nothing to be anything but proud of. And what can you say about her role the next seven days after she swam on the U.S. team? Because as you've seen how she's gone from the youngest swimmer on the team to coming to Florida and now becoming one of the real veterans and one of the leaders of the Olympic team. Uh, we've, I've t had some conversations with both team members from the Olympic mm -hmm. team and the Olympic staff. And, and she just did a tremendous job for someone that was was done very early of staying on top yep. of things. Uh, she accepted with great heart her responsibilities as a team captain and was interested in in the total improvement for everyone. I, I think it's just a tremendous tribute to her character and the way she approaches things. Yeah. Another guy that you used to coach um, on the team was Connor Dwyer, and he had really one of the years of his life um, Kind of had his breakout in 2012, was there the past four years, but really made a name for himself uh, in what he did in the 400, getting back into that event, and then um, obviously winning an Olympic bronze medal in the, in the 200 free. What was, from what you've seen of him, what was different this year? I, I think maturity is the main thing in experience. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, in 2012, he was a little rookie to, to that type of competition. He'd been to one world championship, I think, prior and, and nothing else. And uh, now he's a guy that's been to three world championships, yeah. had success at that level, um, a, a continued level of success. He's just much, much more mature, much more accomplished than what he was then. So you're the head coach of the team four years ago not there this time what's that like being you know at home watching the games knowing exactly what 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 your peers as coaches are going through and um and really not kind of being helpless uh, I, I don't um the the nicest thing about being being a coach in the united states and having an athlete on the team is you know they're well cared for when they yeah. go uh, the the organization the structure everything is in such good line and, and all the coaches on the u.s team they're they're, they're very well versed uh, extremely knowledgeable and, and they're interested in the athletes themselves. There's a little different perspective when you're watching it from TV. In some aspects for your own individual athlete, you actually see some more things on TV than what you yeah, see in, in the heat of the battle to meet. So, um, and in today's technological world, it's so much easier to stay in touch with the athletes and the coaches and, and the communication with the U.S. staff is always tremendous. Any, any specific memories you have of like communicating with maybe Caleb after his race or, uh, or Elizabeth or someone else during the meet? I, I think the, the communication is always there. It's always good. I think that might be the most disappointing part because the um, the actual emotion of an actual uh, contact is yeah. not exactly the same uh, through through media as what it is uh, when you're actually there. Mm -hmm. So through all this, and I, I guess we can go back to trials. 
your favorite individual moment, the moment that, that, that when you think back on this summer, you'll think, oh my God, that was a really cool moment. I think Caleb Dressel's uh, immediate reactions when he touches the wall and Hunter Freestone makes a team. And it was a product, product of uh, 18 months of a long discussion about the last 15 <laughs> meters being the most important thing at the trials. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah. Um, so you guys are, are back in school. You said the freshmen have been there, been there a month. Is it, is it tough to start the whole new quad? Obviously, there's a new group of freshmen every year, but what's it like kind of getting into this, this cycle again, this sort of endless cycle, and this being the very beginning, knowing just how far there is to go? I think from a collegiate standpoint, it's actually easier starting this year than any year. Okay. Because everyone, very few actually go to the Olympics. The ones that haven't been mm -hmm. come in, and there's a, a genuine enthusiasm. They are, in fact, starting a quad. We do talk about that from a perspective, even from a collegiate program, mm -hmm. that the collegiate program gives you a great platform to start a new quad. So they're hyped up and they're ready to go. I think that aspect is good. It's a, it's a little harder for the athlete that has been to the Olympics, especially if they had some success, yeah. because they're coming. We start school early and they're coming right off that pressure cooker so we got a little cautious about how we approach it with them so what has been your approach because you had elizabeth in uh, in 2012 you had ryan lochte in 2004 coming off the olympics what what's your how is it different handling an athlete that has just come off that coming back into into college the, the ones that have eligibility like that they're they're um they make all the team functions because they're, they're certainly key members of the mm -hmm. team. Um, we'll have a big requirement what they do from the standpoint of um, logistical things. Yeah. But they're, they are, they're in a limited practice schedule. Uh, how much we actually compete for the first uh, first month, six mm -hmm. weeks, will be, will be a little limited J just because it takes them a while. Um, the, the fitness level is good. We'll maintain that. But we, we want to make sure that mentally they're focused in and fresh and ready to go when they yeah. do start. So in your fresh, freshman class, you have one especially talented kid named Maxime Rooney who uh, the people were expecting some stuff of at trials, had some moments not quite as much as he might have wanted. Um, so where is he now coming back into, into swimming and... Um, and trying to refocus and, and reset his goals because obviously the, the potential is really there. All right, everything we've seen the first month was was fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's uh, from a great club program, and and he and Steve Marcelli had a great plan. Uh, I don't. Uh, I think sometimes the expectation from uh, from a media and outside perspective is is a whole lot tougher. Yeah. Uh, than we actually get the get get into that situation. You don't. Uh, there's a, there's sometimes a saying. You know, your first Olympic trials is to figure it out. Mm -hmm. is, is to get the experience, and your second sure. one is to really figure it out. And and I think his. Uh, 99 percent of the athletes in our sport would give anything to have a final swim at the Olympic trials. Mm -hmm. He got that at a very young age. He's going to be a great one. Yeah. Um, anything we should know about for, for your program this year? Anything we should keep an eye on heading yeah. into the uh, the season in the spring? I, th I think we've got a very enthusiastic, uh, a really young women's team and a, yeah. and a pretty experienced men's team. But it, it's a nice mixture, and the attitude's been great, and the, their starting point has been fantastic. All right, well, this is Coach Greg Troy. I'm David Reeder. Thanks, Coach, for joining us on Swimming World TV. We appreciate it. Appreciate uh, it. Here Thanks at the ASCA Conference in Fort Lauderdale. We'll see you next time.